Hi there, I'm Becky Shiles. I'm down at the Hub on Canal today in New Smyrna Beach. And I'm gonna to talk to you about fluid art and how I went from being a watercolor artist to completely addicted to fluid art. The first thing that happened is I was watching somebody paint in watercolor on YouTube. And you know how YouTube kind of throws you somewhere else? Well, it threw me to acrylic pouring. I saw that over there and I'm like, oh, what is that? So I clicked on it and oh my God, the beast was born. So I've brought a few pieces in here today to show you because they each have used a different technique and you can Google these and go on YouTube and see all these things. Or you can come down here and take a class from Cindy Dennis that teaches this down here at the hub. Uh, this one is a swipe, which is very, very fun, and there's lots of oohs and ahs when you do a swipe technique. This one and this piece here, both I used a hair dryer on pretty high to move the pigments around. Now, there's a lot of oohs and ahs in that also. This one I used eh, several techniques, blowing, moving with tools. I mean, this, this piece took a long time to do, um, and it's also my favorite piece. This one, I actually cut the bottom off of a Coke bottle, put it on here, put all my colors in the cup on top of each other, and then poured it slowly over the top of this. And that's what made all these oyster shell looking coolness out here. And then I came back in and just kind of used a stick and a little bit of black to detail what I believe to be a flower. So this is one of my favorite pieces right here. Now this one, I call this Miss Calico Dragon and Sparky. Because when I started doing it, I noticed, I kind of saw a dragon, a dragon starting to appear, so I just kind of went with it, and then this kind of turned into the dog she was walking, so there's the name. So anyway, I'm on YouTube looking at all this stuff, and all of a sudden, I see something new, and I'm like, what's that? Well, it was alcohol ink, and I'm like, what the heck is that? So, moving over here, I brought a few of my pieces um, of alcohol ink, uh, some different styles, um, tiles. These are nice for just, you know, a little pop of color here or there. I normally put a little hook on the back of them, but this is used, this is done dropping the ink on and using canned air, which I'm going to do a demonstration here in just a few minutes. This one is done on white paper, uh, which the inks are transparent, so you do want to use not only a light surface, but you want to use something that's non-porous. They make several uh, papers. Upo paper is one. Um, the scrapbooking.com has a paper that's uh, called modeling film that's really nice and um, there's just any surface is fine as long as it's non-porous because if you go to put alcohol ink on watercolor paper the colors just die and you want to bring out the vibrance of the color because they're all just gorgeous i mean you just it's very mesmerizing to do alcohol ink this piece is done on black paper um, that's a completely different technique. Now, down at the Hub, I do offer a workshop in both two alcohol ink workshops. One, where we go on light surfaces, and two, where we paint on canvas and dark surfaces. So, that's available to you guys in the future, whenever we're out from under this lockdown we're in. These two pieces are, I was going for a very soft look. In fact, I even call this one Soft Awakening. This one, I'm a Moody Blues fan, so this is called Moody Browns. 
Um, several tiles. These, um, they're done in alcohol ink, but then I put a coat of resin over them to not only seal the ink in, but it just makes a nicer, nicer look, a nicer finish. And also, if you want to use like a smaller tile for a coaster, you definitely want to have this resin coating on it. Because trust me, I have tried everything that anybody on any Facebook page talking about alcohol ink has tried that say they work for coasters. And I have not found one that works. So anyway, this is what I've brought to show you for alcohol ink. And now we're gonna go over to the table and I'm gonna do a little demo for you. Hi again, Becky Shiles here. Now I'm gonna go into the demo part. I'm gonna do an alcohol ink tile for you. And what I'm using, I'm gonna be using these two colors by Jacquard Pinata, which is sapphire blue and rich gold. And this color is called Cloudy Blue by Ranger. And this is something I have not used yet. I just got it yesterday. It's by Epoxy Candy. I actually bought it to use with resin, but it is an alcohol ink. So I'm, we're gonna throw some of that in there today. Okay. In here, I have some blending solution that's made by Ranger. I meant to bring the bottle and just forgot. So. Anyway, I do this because these little needle tip bottles save a whole lot of product. So I'm gonna get started here. This color is called Blue Raven Bronze. And I'm gonna start with, uh, I'm just gonna start. I like to put a little bit of blending solution on here first. It kind of lubes up your your piece and, and gets the ink moving. Ugh, look at that blue. That sapphire blue is gorgeous. Some of these bottles don't squeeze like I would like. And I'm using some canned air to move it. as well as gravity. I love this gold, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good squirt. You always wanna um, put your tip of your bottle down on your surface, otherwise you're up here and you get, you get drops, and then it's kinda hard to get the drop look out of there, unless that's what you're going for, of course. A little more blending solution with this gold. Look how that gold breaks up. I just love it. I don't want it everywhere, but. Okay, let's see what this Blue Raven Bronze is all about here. Find out in a big way, I guess. And you wanna have a light touch with one finger on this canned air. This is just the, the air that you use to clean your computer keys. And I'm usually thinking landscape or flower when I'm doing one of these. And in this case, it's landscape. Can y'all tell what my favorite color is? I know there are other colors besides blue, but who doesn't like blue? Hmm. I'm liking that blue raven bronze. So there you go. In just a few seconds, you've got something cool and you do not have to be an artist to be an alcohol ink artist. And um, come take a workshop. You'll go home with so many of these that you'll be freaking out and wondering how you're gonna carry them to the car. Okay, now we're gonna move over to my latest obsession, which is resin painting. 
and um, I'm completely obsessed with it. Okay, here we are at resin painting. This, I freak out every time I do one of these. Um, let's start with this one because this one is actually a mixture of, I did a resin painting first on here, and then when that dried, I came back over it with alcohol ink and did the detail of the bottle and the glasses, let that dry, and then I did a, a flood coat over it, and this is what you have. It's, it's very different. And I, I don't know how the lighting in here is showing the depth of this, but when you move it, I mean, it's just like, well, let me just move it. It's just like ridiculous, the depth and the ribbons. It's just resin painting and the, using the different pigments is just, it's my blog. A lot of these, well, most, most of these that you see have stones in them because that's what I had available. Um, a lot of my pieces are hanging somewhere else. Um, this piece I call Mirror Mirror. There's actually alcohol ink in the center part. I use that to tint the resin. And because the alcohol ink is transparent, that part is too and it's got three different layers of the ink on it so this going over it it just like floats on top of it it's really something to see in person and this piece i actually spray painted this piece i, I do most of these on mdf board and which i prime first and then you know start with the resin but i had spray painted this gold first so it just, I got a completely different effects there. And then using these amber stones, I mean, just, I love it. I just love it. And I tend, a lot of my pieces are definitely ocean inspired. I mean, I find the ocean mesmerizing. So I bring that into this, which I also find mesmerizing to do and look at and this also has a few stones in it. You know, I just can't help myself. But you definitely see the wave action here. And uh, purple, I just love purple also. And what I did, I had a little bit of resin left over when I did this piece. So I just grabbed a tile. I usually have a tile handy because I don't like to waste product. And just poured it all on there and spread it around and added some heat to it and there, Boom, you got a little pop of color to hang on your wall or set in the corner. I highly recommend that. Blues, again, just looking for ocean colors. Um, actually, let's see, I, can, I, do, I do know there's other colors. This one reminds me of a seagull in flight. I just love it. It's very, very soft. And of course, it's got the, the shattered glass in here which I just think is beautiful, the way the light picks it up. And this one is also ocean inspired. I started doing it and I'm like, you know, that almost looks like a, a sunset going on the ocean, you know, again with the stones and stuff, but um, you know, geodes are big. So this is kind of a geode ocean inspired piece here. So, this is my world right now. And I also do teach this at the Hub on Canal, a four hour workshop, so, which you, if you would like to come join me in this obsession, uh, as soon as this lockdown is over with, there will be classes scheduled or workshops scheduled, four hour workshop. You'll complete a piece this size, as well as several tiles, and you pick them up the next day and you'll you'll learn how to make something really cool without actually being an artist so i hope you join us and stay safe